Would it be crazy to enjoy more love in your life in under 60 minutes? Welcome to the Love with Intelligence radio show. I am your host, Lily Wolford, an international relationship and dating coach, and I have supported thousands of people like you to enjoy real, honest, and genuine love that lasts using behavioral psychology, body language, profiling, and so much more. Join us now as we dive into the deepest topics about love, dating, heartbreaks, and relationships. Hello and welcome. So, I don't know if you're ready for this, but let's kind of dive straight in because again, I am bringing a very juicy topic to discuss with you today. Are you self-sabotaging to avoid experiencing real love? Now, I really wanted to dive deeply into this one because Everyone goes through a form of self-sabotage at some point in their life and um, a lot of people don't realise how that actually turns up within their love life, within their everyday life, the way that they feel about themselves, you know, everything. And the thing is, it's all stemming from this thing of, you know, fear and not feeling enough. And... This week, I was really thinking about, you know, parts of my own journey, because if you, you know, if you've been following me for a while, you might know that I went into a narcissistic, psychopathic relationship. I was stalked for, you know, five years. I then went into other relationships that were no good. And it got to a point where I thought I'd met the right person. You know, when I think in the first three months of us getting together, he whisked me off to Dubai for 10 days, went on this most beautiful holiday. We moved in, had the beautiful house, um, you know, in a lovely area, uh, two brand new Mercedes on the drive. And then all of a sudden it was like, ah, okay, that relationship came to a very abrupt end. And, you know, when we start thinking about what love is, for example, so my perception of love back then was very, very different. It was like, okay, I need someone to be successful. I need someone to be able to, um, you know, be an equal to me. And that was just the only part. I missed out on the full connection part. I mean, don't get me wrong. We used to have fantastic conversations. We used to enjoy each other's company, but it lacked intimacy. So when that relationship came to an end, and I didn't really understand love at that point, it made me go on this like huge, massive journey of really discovering who I am. And I think this is something that a lot of people avoid and a lot of people are afraid to actually explore because when you start understanding who you are, you also have to go through this journey of self-acceptance. You also have to trust yourself more. You also have to love who you are, and what you find within yourself too. Because the thing is, if you're not in that place of actually fully being able to love and appreciate yourself, you know, the good and the bad, you know, when I say the good and the bad, it's more about, you know, loving the truth of who you are. If you can't do that, then how can anyone else love the truth of who you are too? And it's not because that person's not going to be able to love you. It's more about you're not going to be able to receive that kind of love because if you're not receiving it from yourself, you know, you're not going to be able to be open enough to receive it from someone else too. I'll kind of go into this a little bit more deeper in, in a moment because, I'm, you know, we're, we're just at the start, aren't we? And I'm really diving in. But you can see how passionate I am about this topic. But if I go back to my journey, and this journey was about, gosh, five years ago now. It's crazy how time flies when you're having fun. But basically, I, you know, had to move house, I had to move cities, I had to change jobs, I was still an accountant back then, and the truth is, it was almost like this big reset that kind of happened, where it was like, okay, I thought I'd lost the life that I really wanted, I thought I'd lost everything that I thought that I was meant to have. You know, when we have a look at this thing of the the cookie cutter society of, you know, go to school, go to college, go to university, go and get the fantastic job, 
then have children, get married and retire. You know, it, there's so much more to life than just that. And I think this is the other thing of un- actually understanding who are you? What's the life that you want to create? Because again, this is going to influence the type of relationship you end up in. So if I think back about this journey that I went on, it's like, okay, I had to move back in with my parents. Yay. (laughs) I think anyone who's gone through that, you suddenly realise how much you start to uh, mentally and emotionally regress you also start realising all these different childhood patterns and understand your own um, beliefs and understandings of what relationships actually are and whether it's your parents' relationship that you actually want. Um, And that that becomes very, very interesting. I'll kind of go into that a little bit more in a mo. Um, And the other thing is that when you start to reclaim your life, because... The way I used to operate in relationships, it was very codependent. It was very much like, oh, what do you want to do? Where do you want to go and need? Um, You know, oh, you want to do that? Yes, okay, I want to do that too. You know, it's almost like you lose yourself because you, you're in this zone of wanting to please and wanting to be loved out of fear. You know, it's not real love. It's not real love when you're trying to make someone love you. I mean, how often have we seen the whole things of, you know, send these texts to make them fall in love with you, say these three words, and they instantly fall in love with you. Um, You know, how to captivate his heart forever. No, please. (laughs) It's just not right. So let's kind of talk a little bit about you. Who are you? And when I started having a look at my life back then, I started to understand more about who I was. It was like, okay, well, actually, you know, working in corporate, working as a a divisional accountant for Fortune 500 companies and things like that, it's not actually me. And what I I came to realise was I had had these expectations of who I was meant to be that was based on what I believed I needed to be in order to be loved by my dad. What did I need to do to impress him in order to make him feel proud and, you know, love me? But the truth is, it was because I didn't give that love to myself. And when we start setting these expectations, it was so funny, I was chatting to my coach actually this week about this as well. Because yes, coaches have coaches. (laughs) It's important, we still need to grow. But it made me realise how high you know, we set our expectations. And we when we fall short of any sort of expectation with it, whether it becomes um, something to do about, you know, work, whether it comes to, you know, whether it's about um, relationships, whether you feel like in your relationships you never got enough love. Because <laughs> there's always this concept of, um, you know, nearly getting there or nearly enough or this needs to be improved. And there's never this level of I'm really happy with what I've got. I'm really happy with who I am. I'm really happy with how I feel. And when I think about my journey of actually understanding what I wanted, I mean, I'll be completely open and honest with you. The first year of that journey was I was doing what I thought someone with self-love would do. I was doing all the behaviours, you know, I was getting up at the right time, I was organised, I had a little rotor which I used to really focus on, which was, you know, which was great and useful for that time, but it was almost like I was a robot operating, and it was like everything in my body was telling me there's something wrong, there's something not right, you know when you have that background feeling of, um, you know, I'm doing this, I should be happy logically, but I feel absolutely miserable. And <laughs> I did a lot in that year. So give, to give you a little bit of an insight, in the span of 12 months, because I was so keen on, you know, getting better and having a better life and getting myself back on track, I um, got a new job. I trained as an NLP practitioner, master practitioner, hyp- hypnotist, life coach. I think I even did Reiki um, that year as well. I did public speaking. I had an operation, which put me out of action for about six weeks. But even during that time, I set up my own business. 
um, and I'd lost weight and I got to my goal weight as well. That was all within 12 months, okay? It was, a, and I was traveling down to London each weekend to go and do, um, to go and do the course. And uh, it was actually a really interesting trip when I was traveling down to London. I'll kind of go into that in a mo. But when I had got to the end of that year, even though I'd made all this amazing progress, I got to the end of the year going, what a waste of time that was. Like, what did I do this for? I'm still miserable. I still, I'm not in a relationship. I'm single. Um, you know, I've done all this stuff to understand more about myself, but now what? And I remember feeling so frustrated, so angry, because I felt like I'd been fed this lie of, oh yes, well you just need to look into yourself, you just need to understand this, you need to reframe this, you need to be more positive. And I was thinking, I've been doing this religiously for 12 months, and I feel absolutely nothing. Yes, okay, I might be in a better um, situation, I might be able to understand myself mentally and logically and emotionally, but I'm still in this place of just feeling this background, it was like this background depression. And what I actually realised was it was an element of not really understanding and accepting and loving myself. And it was this thing of, like, this judgment. It was, like, judging myself. Like, well, another relationship failed. You know, the only reason that relationship failed is because you put on weight. Or, you know, it's like, you know, you have that horrible internal voice coming. (laughs) And it just wants to beat you down. And it was almost like this background depression was me punishing myself um, uh, for wanting... um, you know, for basically, for for going through, you know, wanting a a relationship, but that relationship failing, and me ultimately assuming that I was a failure because that relationship failed, couldn't be further from the truth. The other thing is, as well, we tend to put these, um, these mini goals in place, or these mini parameters and expectations, like, for example, you know, going back to the weight example, I was in the state of going, um, oh, Mel, perhaps it was my weight, that's why that relationship failed. Well, the truth is, when I think about, you know, my relationship now, you know, yes, I was definitely skinnier when I met my partner, but the funny thing is, we were talking to each other about this, and, you know, we're both, we're both, uh, both put on a bit of podge over lockdown, you know, it's no denying it, um, uh, but it was interesting just talking to each other and saying, well, actually, Even if we met each other at this weight, let's say one of us was skinny and one of us was a bit on the tubby side, um, it it didn't matter. It was more about this connection that we have with each other and we had that connection instantly. And it was even understanding that that made me realise, well, actually, the the reason that relationship failed, you know, the old relationship in the past, was nothing to do with my weight. And it's kind of like realising love is not this superficial thing. It's not this thing where you need to work really hard in order to be able to deserve love. If you're constantly working to feel good, if you're constantly telling yourself, I can feel good when I have X, Y, Z, you're never going to experience the real love that you're actually looking for. That's really important to understand. I really want to just put that out there to you. Love isn't this thing where, you know, you have to make someone fall in love with you. Love isn't this thing of, you know, wanting to change someone or heal someone or make someone better or take responsibility for someone. Because that was the other thing. You know, if I think back to previous relationships as well, my thing was almost like I wanted to go into the relationship and I wanted to love them. I wanted them to feel better. I wanted them to not be depressed. I wanted them to be able to heal from past traumas. Um, I wanted them to experience this love. But that wasn't my job. That wasn't my job. My job was to be me. And they were showing up as them. But they weren't in the place to be able to actually receive love. 
And the truth is, if I'm going to be completely honest, back then I wasn't open to actually experiencing love either. Hence the background noise of just wanting to punish. You know, punish myself, feel bad about myself, feel bad that I'd gone through a relationship, you know, a breakdown in a relationship and I had to, you know, air quotes, start over. (laughs) Because the truth is, All these experiences, all these so-called setbacks, these are opportunities. These are opportunities for you to understand yourself deeper than ever before. It's your wake-up call to say, right, what do you enjoy? What makes you happy? How can you enjoy this more? What is it that you really love about yourself? Or, if you want to go a little bit deeper... What is it that you're really not happy with about yourself? Because this is another thing. I remember when I was growing up, I um, <laughs> I was the sensitive child. I was always like told, oh, Lily, you're so sensitive. You feel too much. Um, oh, dear, Lily's upset again. You know, it was very much like um, I grew up thinking there was something wrong with me. I remember thinking like, you know, oh gosh, you know, anything that someone says that's negative or anything that I do to upset someone, it would almost send me to the verge of tears, you know, just feeling that I have made someone's life uncomfortable or worse in some sort of way. But what it actually made me realise when I looked at that deeper, when I really started to understand, like, oh, okay, this is, you know, part of my personality is, yes, I do get I do get hurt easily. That's a part of who I am. But when we flip it over, what does the other side actually entail? It means I also love deeper. It also means that I care more. And this was something that I really had to really understand more about myself, because before, before I be- actually came to that realisation that I do love deeply, that I do care more, that I do have this high level of compassion and, and wanting the best for people. Understanding that supported me to be able to actually heal that aspect of that I am quite a sensitive soul. <laughs> because before I hated that about myself I was like oh my gosh there's something wrong with me I wish I didn't feel things so deeply I wish I didn't um, get hurt so easily by people you know it was like I felt terrified I felt to the point where I had like this social anxiety years ago where it was like I don't want to interact with people everyone's bad everyone wants to hurt me <laughs> And the truth is, that's not the case at all. I just want to be able to love and connect with people. And I know so many people will resonate with that. I know that, you know, you've probably gone through a, a, an experience where you felt angry for feeling hurt. You probably felt angry or frustrated for caring about people. And it's like, actually, that's the most beautiful aspect of you. And the thing is, as well, we take responsibility for feeling that pain. The truth is... You know, the reason you're feeling that pain is because that person has showed up as who they are and they haven't met our expectations of who we want them to be. I told you we're going deep today. (laughs) Because here's the thing. If you are setting those expectations which you can't even reach yourself and that you don't even want for yourself, you're probably setting them for other people too, because that's what we do. The way we we look at ourselves is the way that we look at others, and vice versa. So, you know, when we have a look at the expectations, we set on relationships, on people, on family members, on work colleagues. Are they expectations that we could fulfil ourselves? And equally, are those expectations that we're setting for ourselves and other people, is it with an integrity of who that person is? So, for example, and I'm going to kind of use a big example. If someone's a narcissist and you have an expectation for them to be able to feel empathy and love, because, you know, when we have a look at things scientifically, you know, narcissists, the empathy part of the brain is underdeveloped. So expecting them to love 
is like expecting a fish to walk. It's not going to happen. They're not healthy expectations. Now, it's quite funny when we talk about expectations, because like I said, I had this expectation for myself to work up within corporate. I expected myself to, um, to you know, become a CEO or a director of this big, massive corporation and work with co- within corporate and put in the hours and, and, you know, basically live to work rather than actually, you know, when I had a look internally of who I actually am. You know, it made me realise I'm not this person who wants to work 10-hour days. I'm not this person who wants to go and do these triathlons. I'm not this person who wants to be super organised and have, you know, everything set out in a certain way. That's not who I am. Yeah, I expect, you know, I created these expectations and I dated in in accordance to that persona that I wanted to be. It wasn't me. <laughs> it really wasn't me. You know, the truth of who I am, um, you know, when we because this is important, we need to understand the truth of who you are. The truth of who I really am is I am, you know, the person that you see on the beach, the woman that you see on the beach with, um, you know, beach dried hair, because my hair's got like these amazing curls, which I used to straighten like crazy in corporate. Um, you know, with my dogs, enjoying the sun, and um, and just loving that, being present, being at peace, being in that zen, happy, playful, fun state. It's not to be, you know, confined within the within you know these boundaries and social circles of just corporate ways of working it's not me you know it might be someone else you know when we think about type a personality types but that's not me and I was expecting you know I was expecting myself to be this person that I thought would make me more lovable to my dad because the funny thing is when we have a look at our personalities and we have a look at actually who we really are we can start to identify the behaviours that we have started to use in order to to fall in love or to feel loved or to feel like we deserve love. And that all, you know, that all stems from childhood. I've done an episode on that, so if you do want to check that out, check it out on Spotify or different, you know, I think it's on Apple Podcasts and things like that as well. So do go and check that out if you haven't before. But it's being able to actually understand that you know, you're allowed to be loved for who you are. You don't have to work for it. And this is the thing as well. It's like, what would happen if you could actually identify the truth of actually who you are? The reason why most people don't fall in love and meet the right person is because they haven't actually identified the truth of who they are. So when you've got someone who's you know, not actually, actually, (laughs) I'll get my teeth back in, (laughs) when you've got someone who's not actually acting with an integrity of who they are, guess what, you meet someone who isn't also acting with integrity with who they are, and you end up in a relationship together and wonder why you're so bloody miserable. When you actually understand the truth of who you are, and you love that truth of who you are, all of it. Like I said, you know, I've had to come to terms of, I'm an emotional person. I am someone who's actually quite sensitive. You know, even though I understand where it all stems from and all the inner workings and all these different things, that's still who I am. And I've been able to actually go, right, but I love that about me because that also means I'm this. I love deeply. I care about people deeply. I can see people at that deeper level. When I feel things, I can actually feel what other people are feeling. How amazing is that? Because that's a superpower. And it's being able to enjoy and love that. So when I when I when you know when you start actually identifying the truth of who you are, and you even identify the parts of yourself that you might not love, understand that there's a positive element to that part of you that you dislike. And that's really important to identify because this actually helps you to really accept you. So what is it that you don't like? You know, is it the fact that you are struggling with depression maybe? 
Well, have you ever thought that that depression is actually telling you you're not acting within, you know, in, 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 <laughs> oh gosh, I get my teeth back in. Is that depression telling you that there's something within your life that you're not acting with an integrity with? If there's something that you feel miserable about, like I said, I went through it. I went through the whole background thing of I'm doing all the things to show that I'm successful. I'm doing all the things to show that I love myself, but I still feel this background thing of this is not enough. This something's not right. It's usually because there's a lack of integrity somewhere and identify it. You know, anything to do with negative emotions, negative feelings, it's really important to just feel into it and identify what it really is. When we have a look at how we do things, so you know, like I was talking about when I, I feel things quite diff- you know, quite um, deeply and I'm quite sensitive, well, that's more about me and how my way of being operates. That's just who I am. So it's kind of understanding the parts of you that's actually you and the parts of your alarm system that's going off, you know, that's telling you something needs to change. You know, when was the last time you actually trusted that gut feeling? Because that's something that's so powerful. You know, when was the last time you really felt truly connected to who you are? When was the last time you felt fully accepting of who you are without the negative background noise? Because these are the elements that are important to overcome so you can just feel and embody that love. Because the thing is, when we feel dissatisfied in a relationship, it's not about the other person. And I know you're probably thinking, oh gosh, well it is, it is, it is. No, it's not. (laughs) It's really not. Our dissatisfaction is based on our boundaries, on the way that we feel about ourselves and the way that we feel about ourselves in that situation. Okay, and really take that in. You know, we're not angry or, or dissatisfied with that person. It, we're angry with the situation. We're angry that our identity, our integrity does not fit within this. <laughs> and that person has done this. You know, we feel frustrated. We don't, we don't want to go through pain in order to, you know, to be in, in that circumstance. Because that, everything in our being is saying, well, this is not who I am. This is not my identity. But it's also... And I I kind of invite you, if you've experienced this before, or if you are experiencing this, you know, I invite you to actually ask yourself, what is within your integrity? And also, what is your responsibility? And the reason I bring up responsibility as well is that it's about understanding, is it your responsibility to change that person? Or is it your responsibility to look after you? Because what I tend to see in relationships as well is not only do we, you know, sometimes set these very high expectations for our partner to meet, which are impossible for even us to meet, you know, we also have the need or desire to fix someone, and that's not what we're here for. We're not here to make everyone fit within the cookie-cutter mould of what we believe society should be or relationships should look like. That's not what it's about. It's understanding the truth of who you are, the truth of your partner, and the truth of that relationship together. That's important. And it's not to say that, 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 you know, there's never going to be any healing. You know, the truth of the matter is, yes, there's going to be lots of healing. But in order to get to that place, you need to be truthful about who you are, truthful about what you want in life, truthful about what you want in a relationship. So you're able to experience exactly what you want and what you actually deserve. Because here's the other thing, you know, you deserve love. You deserve experiencing the best profound love you possibly can. Because life is just so precious. You think, you know, well, how long are we on this earth for? No one knows. No one knows the exact time that you are going to be here for. 
every second, every moment, every minute, every hour, every day, every week, you know, you get the picture, is so precious. You know, when we think about that background noise again of what I was feeling when I was back working in corporate and doing all the things and and doing my best to create the life that I thought that I kind of wanted and, you know, all these different things, it's telling us. That background noise is telling us something's wrong. Something needs to be looked at. This is not the time to be busy. This is the time to look inwards. This is the time to actually discover... Are you actually acting with integrity? Are you acting in accordance to who you actually are, rather than the expectations of who you believe you're going to be? Because if you're always acting towards the expectations of who you actually believe you're you're meant to be, versus the truth of who you are, you're always going to feel unhappy. Because it's going to be this goal that you're never going to be able to achieve. It's always going to be almost there. I'm nearly there. I've nearly got that goal. And even if you do hit it, there's going to be the next goal. And here's that. That's like why things are so toxic. You know, it's like what would happen if you could actually enjoy the truth of who you are right now? What would happen if you could actually enjoy the truth of the experience right now? You know, even just take this in right now. What's the truth of your experience right now? You know, what are you doing? How are you breathing? What are you feeling even listening to this? What's going on in your life? What's the truth of that situation? And the reason I say truth, okay, and this is important as well. The reason I say truth is because, you know, we love to make stories. You know, Someone, let's say someone said something that was quite rude to you. Um, you know, let's just, let's kind of take a step back. Let's say that someone says hello. They say hello to you. And instantly you create the story of, well, they said hello because, you know, they fancy me. You know, that's going to create a very different reality. Or it might be, oh, that person reminds me so much of this nasty person that I don't like and they've said hello to me. (laughs) Um, Or it might be, um, oh, that person only said hello to me because they feel sorry for me. No, the truth is the person said hello because that's who they are. And they said hello. How awesome. That's the truth of it. They said hello. So it's kind of coming back to what's the truth? Forget the story. Forget, you know, this I forget the identity piece of what you're trying to play out, the role of what you're tra- you know, trying to play out. It's what's the truth? And sometimes it's important to actually ask yourself, does the truth feel good? You know, it's like asking, well, that person said hello to you. Does that feel good? You've got this job. Does that feel good? You're with this person. Does that feel good? Because it's not just about the truth. It's about your truth. Only you know your truth. Only you know um, what's best for you. And, you know, when we're always looking externally for that validation or that approval, like, oh, I've got the job, or, oh, I'm having a baby, or, oh, um, I've just met this person. You know, if you're constantly looking for external validation to feel good in your life, rather than feeling good for acting with integrity of who you are as a person, within your identity, you're always going to feel miserable. And that's where that background noise was creeping in within my life. I wanted people to realise I was doing well despite going through a breakup. I wanted to prove to myself that I could make a better life. I wanted to move away from feeling what I was really feeling and I wanted to keep busy to avoid the emotions of heartbreak. That was the truth. I didn't want to look at it back then, but that was the truth. And the funny thing is, I was dating during that time. I was actually going on dates while feeling miserable, trying to keep myself busy, trying to avoid the emotions, trying to avoid what was really going on with me, trying to avoid 
the truth of who I was because I wanted to feel the ex- fulfill the expectations of what other people believed I should be or what I believed other people believed I should be. Now it's going deep. Now can you see how this can cause self-sabotage? Can you see how that would have caused me to even date the wrong kind of people? Can you see how this is not just a pattern that happened that year for me? That was all the way back, going all the way back through childhood, through my teenage years, through, um, you know, my 20s. Because I hadn't discovered the truth of who I was. I hadn't accepted myself for who I was. I was too focused on trying to change everything and trying to make myself, you know, fill this mould that wasn't me. And the thing is, I see so many other people doing this. You know, have you actually asked yourself, you know, what's the type of relationship that you want? Do you want to work in a nine to five? Do you want to work as an entrepreneur? Do you want to live in the city? Do you want to live near the beach? Do you want to live in the country? What is it that you want? What is it that you truly desire? What is it that actually feels good to you? And this is the thing, this is the important bit. What feels good to you? Because it's not about what feel what what you feel is going to get you the you know the best amount of validation or approval or acceptance or compliments. It's not about that. If you're constantly chasing that, life is never going to feel good. You're never going to end up in the right kind of relationship because you're always going to look for the person that's going to make you look good or make you um, you know make other people think, oh yes, well that's good. For, you know that, that that's good on the outside. You know, and we're talking about the superficial layers rather than a deep, fully connected relationship. And this is one of the reasons I believe I'm in a relationship now where I'm with someone who sees me. They see the truth of who I am. I see the truth of who they are. And we love and accept everything about each other. Don't get me wrong, there's parts of uh, each other that we dislike and that's okay. (laughs) But it's being able to actually bring that in rather than ignore it. It's about accepting that rather than ignoring it. And it's also, and this is going deep, I pre-warn you now, it's accepting the truth of that person rather than the potential rather than, oh, well, if they fulfill this expectation, they've got the potential to fill this, fulfill this expectation of what I want in a partner. It's not about that. And this is where so many people go so wrong in relationships. If you're always looking for the potential, if you're always looking for the dream-like expectation, you're never going to be happy. If you find the truth, if you see the truth, if you accept the truth, you're going to feel peace, happiness, connection, love. Because that's what it is. The truth is all about accepting. It's about loving. It's about being real. And I think this is something that the world has missed for a very long time. You know, you think about social media, you think about the things that people portray and put out there and share with you. It's not real. It's just the parts that they want to show. Like, it's quite funny, I was listening to um, an interview yesterday, and they were talking about deception and lies. And they were saying, well, you know, even a mission, you know, missing something out is a lie. When you think about it, how many people are not sharing the full essence of who they are? How many people are omitting the bad stuff out of their life? How many people are omitting the truth of who they are and still just aiming to fulfill this expectation? And then they wonder, why aren't I loved for who I am? Why aren't I seen for who I am? Why aren't I really cared about? Why aren't I, you know, loved And it's because people aren't prepared to actually appreciate and love themselves as the truth of who they are. They're still punishing themselves for not meeting those expectations. And I really want you to just take that in for a minute. 
what are you punishing yourself for when it comes to your own expectations of who you believe you are? What is it going to take in order for you to reach the truth of who you are? What is it that you feel like you need to change in your life? And I'll give you a hint. I'll give you a big, 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 big hint. If you're looking at changing the external first, you're starting off wrong. <laughs> I remember like I was having this chat with uh, with Jonah, so my other half. I was sharing with him like... Um, I think I was like saying like, oh, look, the reason I feel miserable is is because I don't have goals. I don't have this. I'm not working towards anything. And it's like, actually, you know, this, is, this is what I love about like very truthful, connected, loving relationships. He's like, look, you're looking at the shiny objects here. It's not about the goals. It's about actually, you know, setting the intention to feel happiness and peace. And it just made me stop and think. And I was like, yeah, I'm obsessing over all the different things that don't really matter. It doesn't really matter if I'm earning a certain amount of money. It doesn't really matter if um, if we've got the house. It doesn't really matter if we've got the car. It doesn't really matter if, um, you know, if we've, we've achieved these things or not. What actually matters is the emotion. What do I want to feel? What do I need to accept within myself to be able to feel that level of peace, that level of calm, that level of love? And this is why it's so important to actually get integrated with the truth of who you are. Now, I know we're going like super, super deep. (laughs) But the truth is, you wouldn't be here if you weren't ready for it. You wouldn't have listened this far in if you weren't ready for it. So the other thing is, and this is this is a part of my journey that I struggled with as well. And I spoke about this a little bit, I think, in the last episode. Is don't be afraid if a, if a part of the truth is being able to seek help. Because if I think about how long it's taken me to actually get to this point in my life now where I see it, where I accept who I am, where I can actually appreciate the truth of myself. You know, that took me a long time. That took me a long time to do alone. I I did even have, I say alone, I did have coaches. But the funny thing is, they hadn't cut, they hadn't even reached that point within their lives yet either. So how could they show me? (laughs) So it's kind of like coming back to don't be afraid to ask for support. Don't be afraid to, you know, look within because that was the other thing as well. I was so afraid to look that deep within myself to begin with because I was afraid of what I would find. I was afraid that, you know, I was always going to feel miserable. I was afraid of looking within and going, oh my gosh, I really don't like who I am. Now what? I was so afraid that I was never going to be able to fully accept who I am. Guess what? The truth is everyone has the ability to love and accept themselves. And guess what? That's the start of that healthy relationship with yourself. Because you can only have a healthy relationship with someone else when you have a healthy relationship with yourself. And guess what? You know, guess guess what the difference in the types of relationships that I was in before versus the relationship that I'm in now. It's like almost like, you know, when we have have um, do you remember those old TVs where you know they had the glass fronts and you could look really close and it kind of had like, you know, the it's like very pixelated basically. Like, I was the naughty child, I was the rebel, so I put my face very close to the TV, and you can kind of see these three little boxes or something like that within a little box. <laughs> three different colours. <laughs> um, I don't know why I'm even sharing that. It's not That's not important. But basically, it's almost like going back from the old-fashioned TVs to, you know, the HD curved plasma kind of TV. You know, it's like that's the difference within, you know, a 
superficial superficial layer of, of um, relationship to something that's deep and connected you can see the difference you can feel the difference and guess what because it's the truth because it's, it's going back to the truth of who you are and loving the truth of who you are and also loving and seeing the truth within your partner you can't fake it <laughs> And you will know if you are faking it. You will know. You know that horrible background noise that I was feeling in the past? Where it was like, oh, depression. Oh, this, you know, you're terrible. And all that horrible internal dialogue. That's when you know if you're faking something. That's when you know when something's not quite right. So the question is, is actually, are you ready to experience that real love? And the other question is, and this was something that kind of put the fire, you know, underneath my backside, is what's going to happen if you stay in that pattern? What would happen if you had to stay, you know, this way for the rest of your life, you know, hearing that or feeling that background noise? You know, how would you feel if you knew it was your last day on earth and that's what you felt for the rest of your life? Realise now, time is so precious. Also realise that you deserve to actually enjoy who you are. You know, you're here for a reason. You're here in your body for a reason. You know, don't you want to experience the fullest potential of you? Don't you want to experience the full essence of who you are? Don't you want to be able to enjoy a relationship with someone else who's also experienced that? Because that's the beauty of real love. That's the real beauty of it. It's truth. And this is one of the reasons why, you know, at the very start of my journey of creating this business was being able to see the truth in people, see the truth in myself and see the truth in others. And that's one of the reasons why I partnered up with Chase Hughes. I mean, if you've checked his work out, Chase is a world leader in behavioral profiling. He's got $30 million worth of government-backed research. Um, You know, using that alone, we're able to read people um, better than a polygraph machine. We're able to get to the needs and fears of someone within under six minutes. And we teach people that. But the funny thing is... As amazing that is, it's so logical. It's so logical. So if you're someone, and this is the other thing, actually, before I go into that, the reason it's so logical, and the reason why I still love it, and the reason why I think it's so important, is because people have been trained to to think so logically. People have been told to ignore their feelings and focus on logic. So the thing I love about this is it helps people to logically see the truth. The truth of who they are, the truth of who they're dating, the truth of their relationship, the truth of that argument, the truth of that communication, the truth of the things that you weren't seeing before because you were you know, too focused on your expectations of how things should be. That's where things go wrong. But when you start getting that logic, When you start understanding the truth about people, even from that logical standpoint, you can start to see what you are seeing emotionally and feeling emotionally in those situations. You can start to understand the background depression. You might be able to understand the background internal dialogue. You might be able to understand, you know, more about who you actually are and how to bring yourself back into that alignment of you. So if you want to start, you know, you know, stop this self-sabotaging pattern in relationships, you need to get back to the truth of who you are. You need to stop fitting yourself in boxes that you don't fit in. You're not, you know, you're not this person that needs to be fit, you know, that doesn't need to fit in this cookie cutter mold of what you believe a relationship should be. You don't need to be stuck within this cookie cutter mold of, you know, what you believe you should do as a career or where you should live or any, any life choice, any life choice that you take. Because the moment you're doing things outside the truth of who you are, it's going to feel rubbish. 
And this is one of the most important things for me to be able to share with my clients. Like, for example, like one of my clients, when we first started working together, she had been on antidepressants for, I think she said about just over 20 years, and never came off them. And guess what? (laughs) She came off them uh, as a result of our work together, and she met her partner within 21 days. How freaking awesome is that? The other, um, my other client, you know, one of the things that she shared was, you know, as a result of being able to get to the truth of who she actually is, she felt like in relationships, when she met the right person for her, she didn't have, what was the, what was the words she, she used? She didn't have to translate her soul anymore. I was like, whoa, that's powerful. I wasn't even expecting that. I mean, I go deep, but that was deep for me. She didn't feel the need to translate her soul to her partner because he could see her for who she is. How beautiful is that? Because this is the thing. This is about real relationships. You know, we wonder why so many relationships end up in divorce. We wonder why so many people stay together, yet they're not happy. How many people do you reckon? So if if you've got 50% of marriages end in divorce, how many, you know, of those marriages that are left, how many of those are actually happy? How many of those have actually accepted the truth of who they are? How many of them can genuinely say they're in a relationship or in a committed relationship or healthy relationship that they're happy to be in? not many and we're wondering why we're losing the battle of being able to support people to experience that level of love that level of connection because most people don't have that with themselves and we're seeing this thing of like mental health issues and all these different things because people are living out their expectations rather than their truth I know I've gone really, really deep. (laughs) And I want to say thank you for, you know, being so supportive and for being here listening to me today. I really, really appreciate you. I want to share so much love with you for, for showing your support. And what I want to share with you today and what I want to be able to give you as a thank you is I actually want you to, I actually want to give you 15 minutes of my time for absolutely free. Because I know that in life it's important to be able to have that hand up. I know how important it is to be able to just get that lift that's going to help you take that, you know, take that initial jump into your new life. So if that's something that you would like to experience, then definitely go ahead, go to our website, lovewithintelligence.com and book a free insights call. And you know what the beautiful thing is? Not only is the call free, but I don't sell on those calls. I know there's so many people that do the whole cringy sales thing of like, oh yes, tell me your dreams, tell me your pains. Oh yes, I can can fix that for X, Y, Z. No, this is not what it's all about. This is about being able to support you. One of my awesome gifts from being overly sensitive and overly loving is that I can get to the crux or the core of your issue, usually within, on average, about six, seven minutes. So if you want to be able to experience that, and guess what, I don't even have to know you. (laughs) I don't even have to know you um, beforehand to be able to get you to that point, to be able to support you to find that core. So if you do want to experience that, if you do feel ready to actually understand the truth of who you are, then feel free to go ahead and book a call today, absolutely free, with me, so we can support you to experience real love today. So sending you so much love, have a beautiful and wonderful day, and I'll feel excited to speak to you next time. Bye for now. 
Thank you for joining us on the Love with Intelligence radio show. I'm so grateful that you joined us today. And I'm also so grateful that you are dedicating your time to improve your love life. So as you are already on this journey, would it be crazy for you to jump over to our website, lovewithintelligence.com and check out our many resources that's going to support you to enjoy your dream love life now. So that's love with intelligence.com and I shall see you next time. Bye for now.